Hello everyone. In this video session, we are going to look into next question uh, in operating system uh, from the topic CPU scheduling. And this question was asked in the year 2004 for two marks. The question goes like this. Consider the following set of processes with arrival times and CPU bus time given milliseconds. So in tabular format, uh, it is given uh, the data about four processes are given. Their arrival times are given and the bus times are given. Now the question is, what is the average turnaround time for these processes with preemptive shortest remaining processing time first algorithm? Now what is uh, turnaround time? Turnaround time is basically uh, the total time uh, it takes for the process to complete from its arrival to its completion. And we calculate the turnaround time by subtracting arrival time from the completion time means the time at which it gets completed so turnaround time is turnaround time let me write the formula over here time so please don't mind my writing turnaround time is equals to completion time or termination time means the time at which the process gets completed minus arrival time so this is how we calculate you know turnaround time now uh, the algorithm that is used here is preemptive shortest remaining processing time first or in other words we can also say it is shortest remaining time first or SRT SRPT and SRT are the same now to calculate the average turnaround time we need to find out turnaround time of each of the processes so for that what I am going to do is I am going to um, I am going to draw the timeline starting from uh, 0th time right so let me draw an horizontal line and let me mark the times here so this is zero time one two three four five six seven eight nine So this should be enough. Now <coughs> let me mark the arrival times of each of the processes. Now arrival time I'd mark it as a slanted arrow. This is arrival time of P1. Arrival time of P2 is at 1. P3 arrives at 2, and P4 arrives at 4. So these are the slanted lines which represents arrival time of each of these processes. Now, uh, the time at which P1 arrives at the ready queue there is no other processes uh, which are competing for the CPU so uh, this is the process process P1 would get the CPU without any competition right so P1 would be the process which would get executed uh, from 0 to 1 now what happens at uh, the time unit 1 that P2 arrives at the ready queue now there would be re-evaluation of uh, which process should get the CPU next and that would be depending upon uh, the remaining time of the processes right so so let me write down uh, uh, a quick concept uh, based on which this problem would be solved that is uh, the evaluation of uh, the determination of which process would get 
uh, the CPU next uh, is done at two points of time. One, <coughs> when a process terminates. At that point of time, the reconsideration of which, CP, which process should get the CPU next would be done. And another time is when a new process arrives at the ready queue. When a new process arrives at the ready queue. Right? So these are two events at which revaluation re or reconsideration of CPU scheduling would be done. So this is this is this is a uh, important concept, and these are the two events at which this reevaluation or reconsideration of CPU scheduling, that is, which process should get the CPU next, would be done. Right. So here, you know, this uh, at unit time unit one, P2 arrives at the ready queue and reevaluation uh, of CPU scheduling would be done. So process P1 has already executed for one unit of time. By the time P2 arrives at the ready queue. Now P2 has got uh, the bus time equals to three and P1 at time unit one has got remaining time equals to four because it has already executed uh, one unit of time and total burst time of process P1 is five. So five minus one is four. So the remaining time of process P1 at this point of time is four, whereas for P2 it's three. So P2 would be the winner and P2 would get the CPU next. So P2 uh, happens to get the CPU next and it would get uh, it would execute from time unit 1 to time unit 2 when P3 arrives re-evaluation or reconsideration of which process should get the CPU next would be done right so P3 has got uh, burst time equals to 3 whereas P2 has already executed for one unit of time so the remaining time for P2 at this point is 2. So P2 has uh, the remaining time of P2 is 2 and P3 is 3. Whereas P1 we have already evaluated is P1. So here the competition when this event occurs means uh, the new process arrives at the ready queue. The competition is only between uh, the new process and the process which is active. Because uh, we have chosen the active process previously only depend uh, only depending upon uh, it's uh, only because the active process has got the least you know remaining time among all the processes which were waiting in the ready queue right so we needn't have to reconsider all the processes just the process which is active uh, that processes remaining time would be compared with the new arriving process or the new process which arrives at the ready queue so here P3 and P2 would be compared. P3 is, uh, you know, as it is new process, the remaining time would be equals to its burst time, that is 3. Whereas P2's remaining time, as it has already executed for one unit of time, and the total burst time is 3, so 3 minus 1 is 2. So P2, in this case, would be the winner, and it would uh, keep the processor with itself, and it would keep executing till its completion. So P2 would get uh, this two, you know, time slots. So it would keep the processor and it would, uh, sorry, this is P2. So it would get completed at time unit four, right? So again, a re-evaluation of, you know, CPU scheduling would be done because P2 has just got terminated um, so revaluation of CPU scheduling would be done so among P4 which has just newly arrived and P3 which arrived at uh, time unit 2 and P1 the one which has got shortest remaining time is P4 because the 
remaining time of p4 is 1 it is newly arrived so it's uh, uh, you know remaining time would be same as burst time whereas p1's remaining time is 4 and p3's remaining time is 3 so p4 would get the cpu and it would it would get completed at p5 right now after this p3 would get the cpu because the remaining time of p3 is 3 whereas p1 is 4 so p3 would get executed till time unit 8 now after that only uh, processor p1 would get back the process p1 would get back the processor so oh, the remaining time of p1 is 4 so it would start from 8 and it would get completed at 12 right so this is where at the time unit 12 p1 would uh, completes its task and leave the pipeline so i'll leave the ready queue sorry so where uh, so the total turnaround time of p1 turnaround time of p1 is 12 that is uh, termination time minus its arrival time that is 0 whereas turnaround time of p2 it arrives at time unit 1 and it gets completed at 4 so 4 minus 1 that is 3 p3's turnaround time is it gets completed at 8 and it arrives at 2 so 8 minus 2 is 6 and what about p4 p4 gets the cpu as soon as it's uh, it gets added to the ready queue it arrives at 4 and it completes at 5 so 5 minus 4 that is 1 so total time around uh, turnaround time of all the processes is 12 plus 3 plus 6 plus 1 total turnaround time let me write it here total turnaround time the summation of all the turnaround times 12 plus 3 plus 6 plus 1 and that is 15 plus 6 21 22 so the average turnaround time turnaround time is equals to total turnaround time divided by number of processes that is nothing but 5.5 and this would be the answer right so i have forgotten to write the options but you can see the options those were given is 5.5 5.5 d it's 5.75 and c is 6 and d is 6.25 so the answer here is option a right hope you have understood the logic behind choosing this answer the main concept here is the time the events at which uh, the cpu scheduling reevaluation is done or reconsideration is done and the time at the events are when a process terminates or when a new process arrives at the ready queue these are the two events at which cpu scheduling is reevaluated right and other concept is turnaround time is equals to termination time minus arrival time of a process so with this uh, we have come to the end of this video thanks for watching bye